workflow, script supervisors, directors, and script supervision enthusiasts. I'm Daniela, Sino <laughs> I'm Daniela Sione, and I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada in my isolation station. Um, I'm a script supervisor and a script supervisor script teacher. I have been script supervising for close to 30 years on major motion pictures and film and TV in 11 countries uh, with some of the top directors in the world, uh, including Oscar and Emmy nominees and winners uh, like Bruce Beresford, Davis Guggenheim, Mimi Leader, um, box office uh, mavericks like David F. Sandberg and Paul Feig. I love my job. Really, there's too many great directors to name. Uh, you can look me up on IMDb. Um, I've also been training script supervisors and directors since 1995. Uh, some of them are now my peers, uh, some great script supervisors uh, locally and beyond, uh, and some of them are now making waves as directors. And uh, some of my alumni asked me to do this talk today uh, on why script supervision is a path to directing. Um, so thank you for the suggestion. Uh, now, if you don't know what a script supervisor does, you are not alone. Um, we're one of the most in misunderstood positions on a film set. Uh, I did another Facebook Live video talk about this. It's still on the Mondo Cinema page. It's called The Role of the Script Supervisor in Modern Film and TV, and it gets really down to the details of our job, sort of all the responsibilities. That video is 30 minutes long, guys, and I uh, left out a couple of things. So I'm not going to go into what we do here. Educate yourselves if you don't know. <laughs> um, in a nutshell, though, I can tell you in a nutshell, we work for the producer and the director, uh, sorry, the producer and the editor, uh, to help production save money and time by troubleshooting the visual continuity, the visual storytelling and uh, technical continuity, any matching issues, and many, many other issues long before they happen. We talk to every department head at some point in the day, um, but we work the closest with the director. So we work for the producer and the editor, but we work the closest with the director. Um, uh, as well as the DOP and uh, the, the, uh, in television, uh, the showrunner and the writers, uh, especially more so in television. Because um, writers are just not as on set as much as, as they are um, in feature films as they are in television. So when people ask me what I do, I jokingly, not jokingly, refer to myself as a director whisperer. Uh, and I train all my students not just to be script supervisors, but to become director whisperers. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, if you don't understand what we do and you just see us on set, you might think that we just write stuff down. Um, it looks very secretarial, right? We don't lift anything heavy. Maybe the heaviest thing we lift is our laptop or the script. Um, <laughs> we, we get to sit in a chair beside the director and the DOP and the producer and the writer all day long. We, we do, a, well, we don't sit all day long, but you know what I mean. We're right there in the inner circle. Um, uh, we, uh, we're a key position. We are a department of one and very, very quickly into our careers we are earning six figures and now more often than any time in the history of film and television we become directors uh, and if you don't believe me I've compiled a list of just some people that I know either people I've worked with who have directed me as an actor or that I've worked uh, that I've trained personally um, or just people that I know of through friends okay you ready representing Toronto and we have a lot from Toronto uh, is the great Winifred Young a uh, veteran script supervisor, um, Bossidae Williams, um, uh, Melanie Orr, Marta Borowski, Jill Carter. These are all people directing big U U.S. series and movies of the week and Canadian series as well. And uh, more recently, we've got Donna Croce, who directed Schitt's Creek, Maggie Craig, just starting her career after a veteran career as a script supervisor, and Reem Morsi, feature filmmaker. Um, in St. John's, Newfoundland, we have Jordan Canning, uh, in Vancouver, represent, we've got Patty Henderson and Alexandra LaRoche. These are great directors. Um, uh, in the UK, uh, Rosalind Gildea and one of my students in Slovenia, about to rock her first feature, Rahela Jagric Pirk. I hope I've said her name right. Um, in Australia, we have a, a Maori uh, director who, who came from script supervision, Auni Simich Penne, and I know I've butchered her name. And in uh, the U.S., in Pencil representing Pennsylvania, Chicago, and L.A., Ms. Eve Butterly just directed her first feature. Uh, from Colorado, Rowing Moore, uh, and amazing, amazing script supervisor from Ann Arbor, Carol Banker, who's now producing Titans and is a, is a career director now as well. Um, veteran script supervisor and veteran director Gail Mancuso representing Chicago, um, and the amazing 
director, showrunner, Silver Tree. Sorry, I get choked up when I think about this because you should see when I started in the business. It was there were almost no female directors and certainly not script supervisors who directed. So I do get a little choked up reading these names out. Um, Martha Pinson in New York, Clara Cooper, wait, oh my god, I'm, I'm literally crying, uh, Mimi, Mimi Leader, one of the great directors I have ever worked with, and also Jen Getzinger. So Jen, um, I gotta tell you Jen's story later on, I worked with her on Suits, she has directed some of the best television you've seen in the past few years. Okay, before I go on, and, and while I collect my, <laughs> my emotion, um, do you see a pattern in the list that I just read you? The pattern of all of these uh, script supervisors who became directors, 100% of them are women, right? Um, so apart from Gail Mancuso and Mimi Leader, who, who started directing very early on in their careers, um, and they were granted access to, to directing very early on um, compared to uh, the more recent list, the, the, everyone else on the list has basically started directing within the past 10 years. Uh, Mimi and Gail are amazing. They're forces to be reckoned with. Uh, back in the day, you had to fight really, really, really hard to get a break. If you were a woman or a person of color, you were not going to get a break. Um, and and uh, there was a bit of a glass ceiling. These women um, that on my list have not only uh, directed, have made the transition from script supervision to directing, but they've won Emmys. They're nominated for Canadian Screen Awards, which is our version of uh, the Emmys and the Oscars. We have one. <laughs> we combine it all. Um, and you can bet they're going to make their way to the Oscars uh, as soon as that glass ceiling gets lifted. Um, but actually, a script supervisor did win an Oscar uh, this year uh, because he was the co-writer of Parasite, <laughs> so he won a Best Screenplay Oscar this year. Uh, Jin Wan Han, represent Korea. All right, so now I'm about to say something incredibly controversial, okay? Um, it is my opinion. Um, it is my opinion based on what I have observed in my 30 years so I've been doing this job for 30 years, um, and pardon my French, I have seen some shit, okay? <laughs> and what I, what I got to know very, very early on about the film business is that women and people of color were not allowed to advance uh, beyond a certain point unless they fought really, really, really hard. Um, so where what did they do? What did they do with smart women and people of color? This is not the only thing they did with us, but 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 this was a, this was the the path for anyone who understood the job of the director, understood the job of the editor, understood storytelling, writing, um, and the job of the actor. Where were we? We were in the we were. It was socially acceptable for us to become script supervisors. Okay. Um, now, I, first, before I continue with that thought, I don't want to give you the impression that only women are script supervisors. That is not the case. Uh, but it, historically, uh, men have been in the vast minority. They've been in the minority. I, I just want to give a shout out to Doug Rothstein, who's one of the best script supervisors in the world. He's here in Toronto. Um, uh, he's been a script supervisor longer than I have. And when he, the legend goes that when he met with David Cronenberg and asked him, what is the best uh, way to learn about directing and Cronenberg said to him become a script supervisor and he did he became David Cronenberg's script supervisor and he became uh, Guillermo del Toro's script supervisor and Edgar Wright Doug is one of the, easily one of the best in the world a really fantastic guy and he also by the way did direct some Canadian television a little bit more back in the day but he did um, so yeah I don't want to say that we're a hundred percent women um, and in fact that's completely changing as well um, but at a certain point in the history of film and television production, not long ago, <laughs> we became woke. Um, we became woke. Things became clearly ridiculous. Statistics were released, and those st statistics were outrageous. Uh, fewer female directors uh, working in Hollywood than there are female politicians in the U.S. Think about that. That is flat out ridiculous. And people of color, by the way. So could it be really true that there were no qualified women or people of color who could helm a film or a TV series? Hmm. <laughs> it was clearly a question of access and uh, conscious or unconscious bias and, uh, you know, just opportunity. So when various public shamings began, thanks to many of our female uh, stars or actresses who called productions out for no female directors or no female writers in the writing room, Thanks to that, thanks to um, a suggestion by the ACLU that perhaps um, a class action lawsuit was in order, studios and networks uh, started to um, put um, the new consciousness into action. And they actively sought out uh, uh, women and people of color to direct their television shows and um, and feature films, less so feature films. We've still got a long way to go in feature films. But 
where was the where where could we find a ready supply of people who can technically do the job? Hmm. Not that not that it's ever been a hindrance for any new director to start directing without the technical knowledge, because the crew knows, especially in television, you can bring a writer. Not that writers know a lot, but they don't. They may not have the technical background. The crew walks you through it. So where could we find these female directors? Hmm. <laughs> right there on your crews. Uh, I would say the core, uh, the core people who make a TV series are the DOP, uh, and women have been blocked from that position as well, but that is also changing, but the DOP, the first AD, um, and the script supervisor. So, 10 years ago or less, uh, people started getting breaks in television. Script supervisors started getting breaks in television, and the ghettoization of the script supervisor role started to disappear. We got more respect. It is our time, guys. Um, and in fact, assistant directors are switching over to train with me as a script supervisor because they want to direct and they realize that it might actually be a faster path into directing through script supervision. Men are switching over. At least half my students are men now. Um, so when men start flocking to a position, you know it's finally got respect. <laughs> No diss to you guys. I love you guys. You know that. Um, it's just um, hilarious to me because having grown up in this over the years, it's, it, you know, 2% men to now 50% men. We finally have this respect we, res we deserve. Um, so not only were the script supervisors um, do able to do the jobs and they proved that they could direct, direct they were nailing it. They were getting awards. Um, so my, my students ask me, how do people do it? How have people made the transition from script to directing? Um, uh, okay, so Mimi Leader did it in the 80s. Um, she graduated the AFI as a cinematography fellow. And uh, she was put in the script supervisor's chair, guys. Yes, someone with uh, that kind of clout. And um, um, not, you know, not to disparage our job. <laughs> we know how important our job is, but most people back then didn't. So uh, during her time on LA Law, she stepped up and asked to direct an episode. And she got a few episodes and launched her directing career. Um, Mimi is a bold, wonderful, strong person. Um, not all of us are that bold, but but um, she's also fantastically uh, talented as a director. So that's how she did it. Um, uh, my friend Silver Tree, after 12 years of script supervising uh, television in, in LA, uh, she made an independent feature. She also has written, she had written four features that got made, by the way. Uh, didn't think she was good enough as a writer, she told me, which is crazy, because a lot of writers don't even get four features made, but wanted to, really wanted to be a director. Um, saved her money, made an indie feature, hired some of the crewmates that she made, um, friends she made on set uh, in LA, um, went into a directing training program, which some of them are available in the United States that are fantastic, got uh, mentors along the way while she was script supervising, proved herself as a director, and then boldly, like boldly asked for uh, favors and asked for, uh, you know, asked friends to help her got the gigs and just kicked ass. Just is an amazing director. I got to work with her on her first one hour, a directing gig on Suits. Um, she did a few episodes within two years. She was the showrunner of the show, the director showrunner, uh, which is a more recent position in film. Love, love, Silver. Uh, some of my students do it by asking to direct second unit on the TV series that they work on, um, which is a, a, another pretty uh, straightforward way in. You might ask to direct the webisodes if you guys, if your TV series have webisodes or uh, online content. Um, my favorite story is a Jen Getzinger story because um, she's like very, um, she's in charge but she's also very reserved. Like me, I'm very quiet on set and, and Jen is pretty quiet. So uh, I love her story. So for years, veteran script supervisor, she worked for Roger Corman and on feature films, and she worked on every episode of Sex in the City. What is that, like 70 episodes in New York City? Never, never um, got asked to direct, probably never asked. I don't know if she asked in that case, but she did go to the AFI during her time, on her time off from shooting Sex in the City. She went and got a directing degree from the AFI. She went through the program and made a short film. Cut to... Sex and the City Raps, she does a daily uh, script gig on The Sopranos, um, meets Matt Weiner on set because he was the writer covering set, and um, he says, hey, I've got a, um, a new pilot called Mad Men, um, and I would love for you to be the script supervisor. She said, sure. They got along great on, on that pilot. Um, the show went to series, and he picked up the phone and called her and said, uh, we're going to series in L.A., and I really want you to join the team as our script supervisor. And she said she had a hold the phone moment. Hold the phone. <laughs> she didn't say that, but you know what I mean. 
She said, great. I'm a veteran script supervisor. I'm, I'm in New York City, the city I love. You want me to uproot my life, move over there. What's in it for me? She said, what's in it for me? And to Matt Weiner's credit, he said, well, what do you want? Any great showrunner or a negotiator knows to ask, what does the person want? So they don't have to guess. And Jen said, I've gone to the AFI as a director. I've made a short film. I'd like you to watch my short film, and I'd like you to give me an episode of Mad Men. And he said, yes. Um, and she directed the, um, so she moved to L.A. She directed the infamous car crash episode. That was her first time directing for television. It was a hugely incredible episode. Within uh, Now, Matt was notorious for never coming to set. Uh, within minutes um, of watching her, he came to set and watched her. Uh, uh, and... Uh, <laughs> he said, we're going to need a new script supervisor. I get very emotional, you guys. It's so funny. But anyway, Jen went on to direct so many episodes of that, of some of my favorite television. Um, just ask for what you want. Um, get the experience. Become a director whisperer. Become an indispensable member of the crew and ask for what you want. You have to understand, for those who don't know, TV is the hardest slog for script supervisors. Television so much of is asked and required of us in television that is not the same in feature film. And yet we get paid much less in television. That's the horrible reality about, about working in television. Um, I love my job, whether it's television or film, but I have stopped taking television uh, unless it's under very specific conditions, which I'll tell you about in a sec. But um, television not only requires us to do our job, which is difficult enough <laughs> in and of itself, but it requires of us to um, speak to the showrunner every day, to keep the visual continuity of the show along with the DOP and the first AD. We are the machine that keeps the show running. This core trio keeps the show moving forward so that it's director proof. Um, that's the reality. Any, anyone can walk in and direct the show. Now, mind you, there are many, many, many great TV directors and you don't need to make your set director proof. But uh, you, sometimes you're giving, as a showrunner, new directors a shot and you want a safety net or you're letting the actors um, direct and uh, they can be great too. But it's like you just, need, you just need a safety net and we're part of that safety net. So it's a lot of extra work, right? A lot. Um, uh, and yet we're not compensated um, for it. So it's a great training ground, by the way. If you want to become a director whisperer, do TV because you'll work with so many directors all in a row. You'll become really, really good. You'll at the very least become really, really good at the show that you work on, but you will become a really good script supervisor. Um, so now my deal with television is I don't even take any an interview for a TV job unless Paul Feig himself calls me, which just happened before the coronavirus, by the way. I was supposed to go to North... I was supposed to be in North Carolina working on his pilot. That's okay. Uh, so unless Paul himself calls me, or uh, unless there is uh, a guarantee of future uh, upward mobility. Because guys, I have done hundreds and hundreds of hours of television as a script supervisor. I've more than proven myself on a technical level, um, also on a diplomatic level on the floor, because um, we also have to be great diplomats, right? Anyway, so I, when people call me, I'm like, it's either you're either going to give me upward mobility or, or don't talk to me. And that's how I ended up in major motion pictures, guys, where I walked away from my last TV show, um, which was a great TV show, uh, uh, but it was clear that that was the end of the road for me, and I was also, by the way, the lowest paid crew member, I found out. Uh, ever since I walked away from that show, uh, I my income doubled, the respect level for me doubled, literally everything doubled. Um, so there's no advantage to working in television unless there's unless you're training or unless there's a future for you on that show. Um, so I train. Uh, so that's me. But I've been doing it for 30 years. I can I can say shit like that to producers and not lose my my credibility. I guess. Um, but I not only train uh, my script supervisors to do their job really really well. I train them to be director whisperers because it's going to give them career longevity and satisfaction in the long run. Um, so what does that mean? I, I, I train them to understand the movie the director is trying to make and to be an ally to the director or the showrunner's creative vision. Um, that's the crux of being a director whisperer. Also to learn to communicate early on in the process and very clearly to the director in prep and on set and, and just 
also very clearly with the editor. That's what it means to be a director whisperer. It will set you apart from someone who just takes notes. Please don't just take notes if you're a script supervisor. The, the script supervisors know this. Um, so, and also, uh, the thing you should know if you're transitioning from script to directing, if you're a veteran script supervisor and you are um, starting a directing career, it's going to be a huge pay cut for you because at first, you're not going to be working 365 days a year if you want to. I don't. I work half the year on purpose um, uh, because that's all I can physically handle. Um, but directors, uh, most directors don't work as much as we do on the floor. So it is a huge pay, pay cut at first to transition to directing. So save your shekels. <laughs> make movies uh, when you can. Use your, use your script supervision income to make movies. But that's the biggest regret I have. I, could, that's, I have very few regrets in life. My only probably thing I could say if I was talking to 20 year old me is make movies, make movies whenever you can, whenever you have time off, make movies. Um, if you want to direct, whether you want to direct or not, I'm a screenwriter and I love screenwriting and I wish I had written more movies, right? So, uh, and then some advice that directors have given me, um, when you're transitioning from script to directing is look up from the script. Don't look at your page, look at your actors. Um, uh, learn as much as you can along the way about directing actors. Uh, befriend them as well because they're going to be in your movies when you make these movies. Um, actors are wonderful um, and also mysterious, just like us, so we have that in common. <laughs> learn as much as you can. Learn about script analysis and screenwriting as well. We have some great uh, teachers in North America. Um, in script analysis, you can train with Judith Weston in LA or with John Strasberg in, in New York. Uh, John comes from a very theater perspective, but He's, I've trained with him. He's fantastic. Um, and screenwriting. We have some great screenwriting teachers as well. Beside myself, besides myself, Corey Mandel in LA is a fantastic screenwriting teacher. There's a few. There's many. Um, learn to speak your mind and be in charge. Uh, as Bethany Rooney says, she's a, a longtime veteran TV director who I, I got to work with. She also trains directors. She says, learn to steer the ship. Uh, you don't have to do it by shouting. Just learn to be in charge in the way that you are in charge. Uh, learn to steer the, chip, the ship. Become an indispensable member of the team. Um, become a director whisperer. Don't settle for anything less than you are worth. Be bold, ask for what you want, and make movies, make movies. <laughs> um, and finally, the most important thing of all, when you, if you are a veteran script supervisor, when you become a director, be like the A-list directors who I work with, and trust your script supervisor. Just leave all the technical matching stuff and it's coverage sounding. Just trust trust them as your sounding board. Trust them to do your job. And you just focus on the directing, telling the story visually and working with the actors and um, making your day. Um, those who can trust their script supervisor go farther. The, the, the high, you know. Ask Paul Feig how he works with me. Ask Quentin Tarantino how he works with his script supervisor. The A-list directors trust their script supervisor. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you today. How long have I been going? Oh, not bad. Not even 30 minutes. Um, so my next training program for script supervisors and directors is happening online, um, uh, which is, for the first time, uh, I'm teaching it live, but because we're in isolation. Um, it's available to anyone in the world now. Um, it'll be live from Toronto uh, June 13th to July 19th. There's a whole bunch of uh, various dates scattered between those dates uh, in four-hour blocks. Um, I teach two different courses. One is for directors only and the two courses are for directors and script supervisors to become my director whisperers. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've said today, I fully expect uh, some mud to be slung about what I've said. <laughs> That's okay. I'll take it. Um, I've seen some shit. Um, <laughs> uh, you can email me at mondocinema at gmail.com uh, or check out the Mondo Cinema Facebook page, uh, the other videos I've done. Um, I hope you're safe. I hope you're well. I hope we're all back on set real soon because I love making movies. Um, see some of you soon. Thank you.